just finished a really great conversation with Greg Bagby that you're about to listen to. And one of the things that I really got from the conversation, Greg at the end told, shared a story um, about his father and really that has impacted him and the way that he sees the world. And I thought it was really powerful. And we always talk about the idea of leading by example, but I also think about the notion of learning by example that we're always trying to figure out a best way forward, that people see us not just being away and following that lead, but also see us maybe struggling, see us going through the process, you know, going through the ups and downs, but always going through that process to find a way forward. And that's what I really thought about after that conversation with Greg and how powerful it was. And really, he's such a positive um, light onto the world in what he shares and how he connects. And one of the reasons I really love talking to Greg is because I see him interact with others. And a lot of times I think that so much is unsaid in our interactions with others, how positive it is. Um, but people are always watching. And what Greg does is he not only leads by example, he learns by example. And I just love this podcast. We talk about technology, we talk about leadership, all of the things in education. But I just think talking to Greg, it was just more about how do we be the thing that we want for kids that we want them to see and become themselves. And how do we lead by that? And I'm, I'm still working on that all the time. And, you know, uh, blessed to have people like Greg in my life to connect with. I think you're gonna love the podcast. Uh, make sure you stick right down to the end because Greg's story uh, about his dad was really powerful. And it caught me a little bit off guard because uh, I, I, I didn't know it, but it was pretty amazing. So I, I hope um, you get something out of this because I know I did. So welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm so blessed to have my friend Greg Bagby. Greg is actually from uh, Hamilton County Schools He in Tennessee. He is the coordinator of instructional technology and Greg and I just finished another podcast we recorded and I'll tell you like knowing Greg over the years, first of all, I got to tell you, I got to tell everyone this, even though Greg's in Tennessee, he is like a Canadian aficionado. He is very <laughs> into Canadian stuff, which I find fascinating. Uh, it's every year and your list seems to grow. You tag me and like Shresky and a bunch of people like wishing us a happy Canada day. Yes, right? of course. You would do that for year, but I think your list grows a little bit more every year, right? Oh, you're yes. Just, until, until you get the entire population, I think there you're you not done, right? So I love that. And so Greg is a very uh, positive leader. He's done tons of amazing things in education. He's, you know, like I said, he's a coordinator of instructional technology. He's also been an elementary principal. Um, just an incredible educator. So I'm really blessed to have you here today, Greg. But if you could just tell everyone a little bit about yourself, what you do today and how you got there, that's a great place to start. Sure. Coordinator of instructional technology. Ultimately, um, I help teachers integrate technology into their curriculum. Well, in the, in, in the real world, uh, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, helping teachers integrate technology. Started off many years ago as a music teacher, uh, music teacher slash reading teacher, because every teacher was a reading teacher when I started. Um, and from there, I was given a computer and I set it up. And then the next day I was called into the principal's office and uh, he made me a computer teacher for the next year. So right. I taught computer software tools and music for a few years. And uh, I was given an opportunity to be the assistant principal at that school. It was a K-12 school. It was phenomenal. Uh, but I signed up to be the assistant principal and they moved me to another school, but that's okay. <laughs> so I was an assistant principal at another school for a few years. And uh, then I landed in an elementary school where I did lots of lots and lots of tech integration and lots of all the cool things. Um, my good friend, Todd Whitaker was, he was like the, well, I don't know. We used him for a lot of things in that school, like right. all the things. Uh, and someone saw all the technology I was using in the school and all the things I was doing and said, Hey, Greg, we're going to do a one-to-one -one in our district. We want you to help with this rollout. Are you willing? And I said, of course I am. So I ended up doing one-to-one -one rollout for my district and here I am. Love it. Hey, you know, actually, so I didn't, I did not know the music part of your career. I, I did not know that. And I find that really fascinating because uh, one of my biggest influences 
in my career was Cindy Penrose. She was my uh, kindergarten grade eight music teacher, also my grade three homeroom teacher. And I don't know what you think about this, but I actually have, when I was a kid, I hated art. Like art was not my thing, right? <laughs> and I really struggled with it. I remember I had an art teacher I did not like, and he was like the bane of my existence in high school. I can't, I can't say that I like him to this day either. Like, to be honest with you, okay. he, right. And, and so I like, I think sometimes I associated art. So, um, art with like drawing and painting and stuff like that. Yes. But as I got older and as I started presenting and I know you've seen me keynote before, I really saw how the way I done keynotes as an art. And the way I put slides together and the way I try to bring a story together. And so I find it fascinating because I feel like what I learned in music class and what I learned with technology and how I brought them together was actually art in a way that I never saw art before. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like, what, what are some of the connections that you've seen with your experience in music? And, you know, um, in technology and like, how are they actually connected? Because you actually said there was a part of your career where you're actually doing both at the same time. And I know that obviously, you know, it's a part music is a part of you. Technology is a part of you. So how do you actually see the two as connected? Wow. Uh, so <laughs> it's a good question. Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's a great question. Uh, the whole idea of the music and technology part, I, I think, well, for me, technology is more than just getting on the device and um, looking at videos on TikTok or YouTube mm. or all whatever and, and playing in the socials. It's about creation. Um, ever since I started doing technology stuff, it was always creation. Started with uh, Photoshop and mm. uh, Final Cut before it was even Final Cut Pro. Uh, it was one of those things and iMovie. Always having kids create and using technology to create. Create right. something that meant that's that was special to them and that's what we did with the music i always wanted to create independent musicians uh musicians that can go well sit in on a bar band and play a play a tune or whatever but right. um i wanted kids to be able to go to i just remember okay quick story long long time ago teaching these kids how to do powerpoint i know powerpoint i love but it PowerPoint. was, in, I, it was in 20, designer, right uh, actually PowerPoint's amazing now, but uh, this was back in 2000. I remember this kid, I was teaching him PowerPoint and uh, I taught him how to do some transitions and things in class because it was high school and they needed to know how to do transitions because that's the fun thing in PowerPoint back then. But uh, yeah. this one kid, he comes into me and he's like, oh, Mr. Baby, you'll never believe what happened. I was like, what? He's like, I got to uh, do a presentation for my manager at AutoZone. Yeah, he was right. working at an auto parts store and my manager was able to take it and use it with his manager and and they're going to give me a raise and doing all those things and I get to do other PowerPoints for him. And this kid was like stoked and uh, it was just because he learned how to do PowerPoint. <laughs> but right. it's that's what I want. I want them to be independent creators. Uh, I've wanted it since the beginning and I want it uh, now. And that whole music idea of being an independent musician, um, becoming independent creators. I believe that mm -hmm. flows in the same way. And that's why the whole idea of technology comes to play. And my kids, I have uh, two boy teen and girl to 20. They've always, well, they've never known a day in their life without a laptop, but they're right. both very musical. Uh, they're both very tech. Well, they're technology. What do they call them? Right. Natives. Yeah. And I, I believe they are natives, digital natives. Um, mm -hmm. And we got to, of course, transform them to be digital learners, but that's neither here nor there. But my kids are always creating. Uh, my son who plays a guitar for a talent show, he also creates this stuff in scratch on just mm -hmm. for the fun of it. And it's this whole idea of putting the art that's inside the kids to some good use, be it through music or through technology. There's actually, so there's a, um, there's a blog post I wrote years ago and you reminded me of it in, it was, I think I called it like, uh, 10 reasons PowerPoint doesn't suck. Right. I, I remember something <laughs> that, that sounds like something you would write. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I remember wanting to title it. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. PowerPoint doesn't suck. You suck. Like that was like <laughs> what I wanted to like, you know, like a little provocative title. 
But the, the point of it was a lot of people go, Oh, like this PowerPoint. I'm like, yeah, but it's not like, okay, maybe it gave you a template and you filled it in, but that's more of a you issue. And, yes. and, then, and then a lot of times, um, like I, I use, you know, I use keynote, which is the Mac equivalent of PowerPoint. I think it's a little bit better, but I think that you can still do some pretty amazing things. And I, I haven't used the new PowerPoint, so I, I couldn't tell you, but I, I always find it fascinating that I, I watched you just say like, Oh, we were like sitting in this presentation in the afternoon and put, someone just had a bullet points on slides and it was just horrible. And then I watched sometimes the same teachers actually get their kids to do the exact same type of presentation. I'm like, are you trying to punish <laughs> the next generation? Like, what are you doing there? So yes. do you see, do you see PowerPoint as a fill in the blank activity or an art form? And I think once you start seeing it as an art form and how you design it, actually how it like accentuates storytelling, there's something really powerful there. But if you see yeah. it as just like a way to like something for someone to put on a board so you can read off of, yeah, of course it's going to be boring. So I think part of it is shifting it to like, how do you actually see that medium and how do you utilize it? And I think, you know, you really bring that point home. Yes. Um, my daughter's last semester in college, she was home for, I don't even remember why she was home, um, but she was home for some weekend and uh, she was working on a PowerPoint presentation and, yeah. and she was like, Hey dad, do you know about these design elements in PowerPoint that you can do this? And it shows this different. I was right. like, uh, yes. And then I showed her the, uh, presentation coach in PowerPoint and oh, okay. I know that. It, it blew her mind. Basically you turn on PowerPoint and you act like you're doing a presentation and it coaches you. Right. It tells you, Oh, you said, uh, too many times and your spacing between these words were a little bit off. And, and, and it goes through this whole idea of analyzing how you deliver this PowerPoint. <laughs> right. And it even says you read every word on the screen or things like that. And my daughter, once again, blown away. She's trying to be a creator, which she was. Right. And that, once again, PowerPoint. And yes, as you called it, that powerful tool of yeah. PowerPoint. It's amazing how those easy things are. And, and one other thing that you talked about, the teacher complaining about a PowerPoint and then creating, having the kids do the same. Yeah. It reminded me of the, well, I guess I was the one complaining. Um, sitting in a, a PD complaining about, I'm sitting here in a desk, uh, rows and chairs with teachers sitting beside me, and we're looking up front, and we're doing this sit and get, and this guy's talking about engagement the whole time. Right. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Right. So you're telling us how to, you're showing us how to engage students, and we're not engaged. <laughs> and it was just right. one of those things. Right. And yeah, I think like, like I, I always find that there's that bridge between like, you do have to provide content and stuff like that too. But like, if you don't give people time to actually in, interact with it, make their own connections and then, then we yes. lose people along the way. So I think that's a really powerful point. So I got to ask you about your current job. You said you're the coordinator of instructional technology for Hamilton County school. So what is it? What is a coordinator of instructional technology? Uh, I should actually ask you this question. What do you, I want to maybe make this two parts. What do you do? But I think the second part is like, is that what you want the job to be? Cause I think a lot of times, uh, you know, when you have technology, I'm sure this happens to you, right? Technology is in your title. So I guarantee that you are fixing stuff that you're like, seriously, is this what I gotta be doing right now? Like, is that, is that a thing that happens to you? Like you're like fixing technology for people that maybe they're like, that's not you're like looking around. Oh, no. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> so, no, 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 not at all. So, like this morning when I was uh, getting given a message, hey, we need you in the superintendent's conference room because uh, his assistant is here and I don't know how to set up this right. uh, program to work with the Zoom and the presentation and everybody in the room and having right. all. And it was one of those things like, yes, that's let me run over there and get that taken care of. And oh. another thing was, oh, we need speakers and uh, projectors set up at this one high school because we're going right. to have a big meeting there. And I was like, well, thankfully, some uh, gentleman on my team is going to take care of that because I'll be out of town. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing I get a call for. But what so that's the type of things I'm doing now, as well as closing some tickets. Right. Because we don't have a really great, a robust help desk implementation uh, pushed out yet. Uh, but I do get to help teachers inside of the LMS and uh, help them navigate their way inside the LMS and show them what to do. As in, I'm just thinking of all the things I did today. Uh, yeah. And 
helping with an RFP that I really, yeah, that was so much fun writing an RFP. But uh, what I want to focus on and what I believe I'll be able to do uh, when I come back from my little holiday is that, um, yes, I have a oh, holiday. Right. You're late. I forgot. You're like leaving. You you graciously did this right before you're going on a holiday. Yes. Yes. I yes. Headed that. out of the country. Um, soon. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> but uh, but uh, no, um, when I get back, one of the things that I'm working on with the team that I'm with, uh, we're working on a digital literacy uh, curriculum guide. Right. So uh, we're trying to figure out what pieces of the technology that we have in the district uh, that teachers need when they're first when they first start off, when they're on board. Yep. What is this technology and how can we move them to be not only the uh, we have different platforms here. But, yes, I want the teachers to ultimately be digitally literate to where they're training the students to be creators and not consumers. And we're using the rigor relevance. You could any model you want to think of. You can think of the rigor relevance. You can think of TPAC. You could think of SAMR. Right. But the teachers understand each of those models and how to move the kids around. Uh, and ultimately, when the teachers are at the level of whatever, digital, digitally literate, they have access to things like being a Google certified trainer or being a Microsoft innovative expert or being a Apple distinguished educator. As in, I want to push the teachers to see that as the end goal, not just being that digitally literate teacher, yeah. but being digitally literate and being able to, if they want to go up to the next level to where they're actually training folks on whatever products there would be. Mm -hmm. Because I think teachers have so much power and if they're a great teacher teaching literature, they can be a great teacher teaching technology to that right. new teacher that just came into the building. So there you go. That's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. And I, th I, so I think one of the, one of the things that we did in our school district when I was there and I, I, I've talked about this before. So I struggled with, you know, being an administrator who was like very, um, you know, comfortable with technology, wanted my school to utilize it. And I remember I showed them like the latest and greatest stuff, right? Nonstop. Same. Right. <laughs> Nonstop. Like I, I had like 10 new tools every, every month. Yeah. You know, right? right. Like here's 10 new tools, 10 new tools. And I think, um, one of the things that I did wrong that, you know, it was just bombarded them with new stuff that we never actually were able to dig deep into stuff and probably turn people off of technology more than that got them excited about it. But then, then we actually followed up by just saying like, Hey, let's focus on going deep with a few things. Let's spend like years on this. So that it's become second nature. Like I don't like I'm holding this pen because I write notes as we're going and I don't think about it. Like I just do it. Whereas a lot of times we constantly put people in the position where they always have to think about the technology where it doesn't become second nature because we haven't given them enough time to actually, you know, just make it a part of, you know, like an extension of, of what they do. And I think that's where a lot of school districts go wrong is they are constantly focused on the new stuff and the latest and greatest and all of these things, as opposed to saying like, hey, yeah, those things are happening, but let's just be really good at these few things so that we're, we're not just focused on the newest technology, but really how do we actually, um, you know, for example, I, I, like I, I still use blogs all the time because I think it actually really helps with writing. I think it's one of the best ways to learn to read and write, communicate, especially online. And so I, I appreciate that too, is like you're getting to that place of depth. And I think for a lot of people listening to, don't focus on all of the things, focus on a few things, doing them really well. And I think you'll, you'll be better served. I think your staff will be thankful for that as well. And is that something yeah. that you've seen as working in your, like in the process of what you do? Like, how, how is that? Like, how, what's your philosophy so, I just shared? Yeah, um, well, the whole idea of, task before apps or uh, mm -hmm. you, you want the content, whatever the content is, and the apps or the tools are secondary. Um, yeah, but when when you find a tool, I'm all about, let's learn this tool. Yeah. Let's not try to learn all these tools. You go to these things and you see 50 tools in 50 minutes. And right. I have to say, I've been guilty of doing some of those right. sessions. Uh, but when I think they're really great tools, of course. Right. Um, and I'll Actually, I'm signed up to do one at a conference in a couple of months. But uh, the idea behind that is, yeah, I'm going to give you a scatter plot of a, oh, a scatter plot, a bunch of tools that you can use. However, 
I want you to just find one and focus in on it. Right. Dial in on that one tool and become really become an expert at that one tool. And if you want to add another one, yes, but don't try to add more than one. Never, ever, right. ever try to learn. So, yeah, you maybe you have the cap capacity to do so. I remember a couple of years ago, my wife was going to Finland. My daughter was taking Spanish for the first time and my son was taking French for the first time. Or my daughter was taking Spanish for the eighth time. I don't know. She right. did in elementary school. But um, I said, so I'll take, I'll learn some French, Spanish, and Finnish. Right. Uh, all at the same time. That didn't work. <laughs> right. Right. And it was work. one of those things where, uh, yeah, I, I know a couple of words in all the languages, but that's about it. And right. it's one of those things that I think had I honed in, focused in, uh, drilled in, uh, it would have been better for me. And I think it's the same way with uh, technology. Yeah. The, the, so it, it is kind of interesting. And I, I start with this because I've had lots of conversations with educators and it's like, oh, like our school just inundates us with so many tools. And like we we're, we're struggling with this. But then the 50 tools in 50 minute session is always jam packed at conferences and then conferences repeat them because they know they're just a sure thing. Right. Like always. they always get a huge attendance where it's like, hey, like, are we actually like advocating for something that we're not like we actually will we're kind of going against. And I, I remember there's this distinct time I was doing a workshop with a school and I actually was shocked at this answer. I was expecting something totally different. I said, look, if I could just let you do whatever you want with any technology, you figure it out on your own, but you had all the choice in the world, would you prefer that? Or would you just want me to decide for you a couple tools, but promise you that we're going to focus on that for a couple of years. And they're like, just tell us what to do. Just, just, and I was like, Oh, and I think it was because a lot of people know that we have to implement technology in meaningful ways into our classrooms because it's just part of society. It's part of the world, but they don't know where to start. And so they become so overwhelmed that they just push it all away. Right. And yes. rightfully so. And that's like when you become overwhelmed with something, you're just like, ah, that's like enough of that. And then you just want nothing to do with it. And I was like, oh, like that actually helped me kind of think differently about this stuff. And so, hey, so we're going into the 2022, 2023 school year. I've been asking this question, my guess, as of late. We people have, you know, like across the board, I would say it's a consensus, not the like not everybody, but the consensus is that this last year, 2021 to 2022 was harder than the year prior, but many people thought this would be the easier year. We'd be kind of getting back to some routine, right? Uh, I'm have you found it that way? And like, if so, how do you see the next school year rolling out and how do you kind of look at that and what's about to happen? So yeah, it seemed to have been that way. It's kind of crazy that it's that way. You think that, right. Oh, we're relaxing. Uh, I, I think part of the reason why it's as crazy as it is, is we had a pandemic that shook up the world mm -hmm. and shook up education. And we had an opportunity to make some amazing changes all over. Uh, not saying that we we're doing a bunch of things wrong, but the pandemic, of course, unveiled a lot of things that we could do and work on. And some folks are trying to fix the issues that we found and it seems as others are trying to contain or go back to way go back to the right. way it was <laughs> and i think yeah. that's where some of the conflict is coming from which i know it sounds crazy why would you want to go back but some folks believe yeah i want to i've heard i'm ready to put all these devices away so we don't have to ever right. use them again um which is kind of crazy but i, I think um after this year folks will realize Okay, so the devices really weren't that bad. Right. And some of the things that I could have learned or things that I could have done, it really wasn't that detrimental. And the kids can still learn even with the devices and we can still do these things. So my hope is that um, it will be a little bit easier year because uh, that whole storming and norming forming, I don't even know yeah. the whatever. Uh, some edu talk. Uh, right. But uh, hopefully we're past that so that we can all seek a, a clear space and go to where we believe that things will be better. And my hope is that it will be better, even though I know for a lot of teachers, 
well, a lot of teachers that are leaving the profession, yeah. um, it may be better for them in that sense. But uh, yeah. sadly, the great resignation I, I, that they've spoken of, I, I know that it's happening because I have friends that are <laughs> friends that are leaving the profession. And I see on Twitter and Facebook folks that saying, yeah, I've signed up with this company and that company and right. I'm no longer a teacher. Yay. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think, I think, uh, I think if you're not happy with what you do, I think one of the best things to do is leave because that sends a clear message. Like this is not working for a ton of people. And yeah, I, I would never fault someone for, you know, walking away from, I have walked away from jobs that I did not like, and I know I've been happier, uh, because yes. of that. And so, um, if that's what it needs, but then I, hopefully it provides a wake up call to, to people saying like, Hey, like, remember assist like always the whole like oh it's the system well the system's made up of people and people are making you know decisions that are putting people in uncomfortable situations so don't, don't, it don't it's like blaming the wizard of oz there's somebody behind the curtain <laughs> running stuff so yes um, hey so i, I want to leave you with this last uh question i find you to be a very positive person and there's like all this like toxic positivity garbage i'm not a big fan of that stuff because I, I find it like we don't really talk about toxic negativity we talk like you know like it's because that that also can be toxic and i understand the i understand the mentality and the sentiment behind the notion of toxic positivity but i think yes. people just throw it around to anyone that is positive and when i say that you're positive i don't say that you're like uh i guess for lack of a better word delusional right because like you just talked Thanks. about right right because <laughs> right, i think some people think that you know positivity is delusional and pretending that nothing else is going on around them but i find you to be a very positive person that is solution focused and that's something that you know and so like how how like i don't i don't feel you ignore bad situations i feel you figure out a pathway to move forward and that's that's when i say you're positive that's how i look at it. is that correct and like how do you keep that mentality in such a, in such a, you know, a, a tough time? Uh, well, uh, I don't know uh, how to answer this correctly. Uh, I, I guess I can give you the answers that come to my mind. A long, long time ago when I was a little kid, my father was an alcoholic, mm -hmm. uh, raging alcoholic, yell, scream, cuss, all the things, never physically abusive, very verbally abusive. And it was one of those things that um, when I got into education, I saw, my first school parents were being the same way as my father, wow. which, but my father was in the army. So, and he was in Vietnam and he was sent to Vietnam six days after I was born. And he didn't start drinking until after that six days after I was born. And right. he was sitting in the back of a Jeep and the guy he was sitting with his head got blown off and he grabbed the bottle out of his hand, started drinking and never stopped until I was 16. That's mm -hmm. a long story, but, uh, so uh, it, it took me a while to understand my father's demons as to why he was that way. Um, but it still didn't, it didn't uh, remove the fact that he was that way. And then I get to schools and I'm working with students and I see their parents being the same way all the time. And, and I realized, well, I didn't realize, I knew that I can control myself and that's it. Um, I can control how I feel about things, how I react to things. Uh, and, nine times out of 10, the way I react, if somebody does something or something happens horribly and the way I react and if folks are watching me, they'll pick up on that vibe and they may react the same way, especially right. kids. When you're a teacher in the building, if you say bad things about the principal and you're always putting down the principal, all oh, the principals, blah, 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 in front of your kids, your kids are going to start thinking that way. Right. Um, well, that's what I've seen. And right. it, it's one of those things where, uh, I think the world's full of enough crap that <laughs> right. we should try to bring out positive things in the world, even in times of horrid times like uh, the school shooting in, uh, tech, yes, down there. And uh, I was on a podcast with Hedrick Johnson, I believe, and she's from Texas. And we were talking about the shooting itself, and she was just – heartbroken over it and, and and it's one of those things where yes our hearts should break and it's not oh yay let's be right. no 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 our heart should break over stuff right. like that um but 
going into a building, yes, show the emotion, let the kids understand why you have that emotion, but um, you got to make sure that they they see a brighter side. There always have to be a brighter side because we can hurt a lot of people if we're just downright dark and right. upset and always pessimistic and all the things. Uh, and we have the ability to choose. So why don't we? And as I'm listening to you, and I I did not expect that answer to go that way, but I'm so I'm so grateful that you shared those stories and how powerful that was. <laughs> and I, I think that um I think I think a lot of times we focus more on teaching, not on what what not on necessary learning. And I know that sounds like a weird uh, you know, maybe a false dichotomy, but I think a lot of times um we what is learned is taught whether intentionally or not and just kind of like what you said like your how you model your behavior you're teaching even though you're not necessarily specifically telling people how to be you're teaching them yes. through, your, through how, and i think that's you know positive or negative uh, and and as you described as finding a, a brighter way forward and uh, like honestly uh, it's the best way to end the podcast because it just <laughs> it is so um it just it just it just summarizes you know a lot of what how why i admire you so much why i respect the work that you do and and really the way that you connect with people and i so appreciate you taking the time not only out of your day but before <laughs> going on a vacation because i remember yeah. saying i said you said you're going away the next day so i hope you have a wonderful vacation greg i appreciate all that you do for not only your school district but for the world of education and i anyone who's listening please make sure you connect with greg he's absolutely a blessing to not only the world of education, but the world in general. So, Greg, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, George. Thank you for having me. This has been fantastic. My pleasure. Hey, thanks, everyone, for listening. Have a wonderful day.